Muhammed. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان ألا تطغوا في الميزان وأقيموا الوزن بالقسط ولا تخسروا الميزان والأرض ودعها للأنام فيها فاكهة والنخلات الأكمام ويحب ذو العصف والريهان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان خلق الإنسان من صلصال كالفخار وخلق الجان من مارج من نار فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان رب المشرقين ورب المغربين فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزق لا يبغيان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يخرج منهما اللؤلؤ والمرجان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان ونق الجوار المنشآت في البحر كالأعنام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يسأله من في السماوات والأرض كل يوم هو في شأن فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان سنفرغ لكم أيها الثقلان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يا معشر الجن والإنس إن استتعتم أن تنفذوا من أقطار السماوات والأرض فانفذوا لا تنفذون إلا بسلطان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يرسل عليكما شواذ فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان وإذا انشقت السماء فكانت وردة كالجهان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان فيومئذ لا يسأل أن ذنبه إنس ولا جان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يعرف المجرمون بسيماهم فيؤخذ بالنواسي والأقدام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان هذه جهنم التي يكذب بها المجرمون يقوفون بينها وبين حميم آن فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان ولمن خاف مقام ربه جنتان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان ذواتا وأفنان فبأي آلاء فيهما عينان تجريان 
وما كانت إلا ساعة وإذا بولد الحسين قد أقبل وقال السلام عليك يا أمة فقلت عليك السلام يا ولدي ويا فك قرة عيني والثمرة فؤادي فقال لي يا أمة إني أشم عندك راية طيبة كأنها راية جد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله فقلت نعم إن جدك وأخاك تحت الكساء فدنا الحسين له الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا جدا السلام عليك يا من اختاره الله أتعذن لي أن أكون معكما تحت الكساء فقال وعليك السلام يا ولدي ويا شاف يا أمتي قد أذنت لك فدخل معهما تحت الكساء فأقبل عند ذلك أبو الحسن وألي ابن أبي طالب وقال السلام عليك يا بنت رسول الله فقلت وعليك السلام يا أبو الحسن ويا أمير المؤمنين فقال يا فاتمة إني أشم عندك راهية طيبة كأنها راية أخي وابن عمي رسول الله فقلت نعم ها هو ولديك تهدى الكساء فأقبل فأقبل علي أنه الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله أتعذن لي أن أكون معكم تهدى الكساء قال له وعليك السلام يا أخي ويا وسي وخليفتي وصاحب لوائي قد أذنت لك فدخل معكم تحت الكساء ثم أتيت نحو الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا أبتا يا رسول الله أتعذن لي أن أكون معكم تحت الكساء قال وعليك السلام يا بنتي ويا بضتي قد أذنت لك فدخلت تحت الكساء فلما اكتملنا جميعا تحت الكساء أخذ أبي رسول الله بطرفي الكساء وأوم بيده اليمنى إلى السماء وقال اللهم إن هؤلاء أهل بيت وخاصتي وهامتي لهمهم لهمي ودمهم دمي يؤلمني ما يؤلمهم ويهزنني ما يهزنهم أنا هرب لمن هاربهم وسلم لمن سالمهم وأدو لمن أعداهم ومهب لمن أهبهم إنهم مني وأنا منهم فاجعل صلواتك وبركاتك ورحمتك وغفرانك ورضوانك علي وعليهم وأذهب عنكم رجسا وتحرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد فقال الله عز وجل يا ملائكتي ويا سكان السماوات إني ما خلقت سماء مبنية ولا أرضا مدهية ولا خمرا منيرا ولا شمسا مضيئة ولا فلك يدور ولا بحر يجري ولا فلك يسري إلا في مهبت هؤلاء الخمسة الذين هم تحت الكساء فقال الأمين جبرائيل يا رب ومن تحت الكساء فقال عز وجل هم أهل بيت النبوة ومعدن ورسالتهم فاتمة وأبوها وبعلها وبنوها اللهم صل على محمد محمد فقال جبرائيل يا رب أتعذن لي أن أثبت إلى الأرض ليكون معكم سادسا فقال الله نعم قد أذنت لك فهبت الأمين جبرائيل وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله الألي لا لا يكرهك السلام ويقصك بالتهية والإكرام ويقول لك وعزتي وجلالي إني ما خلقت سماء مبنية ولا أرضا مدهية ولا قمرا منيرة ولا شمسا مضيئة ولا فلك يدور ولا بحر يجري ولا فلك يسري إلا ليجلكم ومهبتكم وقد أذن لي أن أدخل معكم فهل تأذن لي يا رسول الله فقال, فقال رسول الله وعلي وعليك السلام يا أمين وهي الله إنه نعم قد أذنت لك فدخل جبرائيل معنا تحت الكساء فقال لي أبي إن الله قد أوهى إليكم يقول إنما يريد الله ليذب عنهم رجاء أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا 
وقال لي لأبي يا رسول الله أخبرني ما لجلوسنا هذا تحت الكساء من الفضل عند الله فقال النبي والذي بعثني بالحق النبي واصطفاني بالرسالة نجية ما ذكر خبرنا هذا في مثل من مثل أهل الأرض وفي جمع من شيعتنا ومهبينا إلا ونزلت عليهم الرحمة وهفت بهم الملائكة واستغفرت لهم إلا يتفرقوا فقال علي إذا والله فزنا وفاز شيعتنا ورب الكعبة فقال النبي الثانية يا علي والذي بعثني بالحق النبي واستفاني برسالة نجية ما ذكر قبرنا هذا في محفل من محفل أهل الأرض وفي جمع من شيعتنا ومهبينا وفيهم مهموم إلا فرج الله هما ولا مهموم إلا وكشف الله غما ولا طالب هاجة إلا وكظ الله جهاجة فقال علي إذا والله فزنا وسعد وسعدنا وكذلك شيعتنا فازوا سعدوا في الدنيا والآخرة ورب الكعبة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد That's Surah Fatiha for all the Marhumin, please Salawat Allahumma salam Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain Ya Hussain, Mayana Nabi, Majima Sayyada, Majaba Ali, Majaba Hassan, Hami hai Panjatan, Hami hai Panjatan, Mayi kya hai khata, Kuch pe kyu band karte ho pa, Ali kya Muhammad ka piyara nahi, مجھ پہ کیوں بند کرتے ہو پا آلی کیا محمد کا پیارا نہیں کیا میں زہرا کا جایا نہیں کیا میں زہرا کا جایا نہیں کیا میں زہرا کا جایا نہیں کیا نبی کا نواسہ نہیں مجھ پہ کیوں بند کرتے ہو پا Ali kya Muhammad ka piyara nahi Mujh pe kyu band karte ho pa Ali kya Muhammad ka piyara nahi Maa nana ne kalma se khaya Or Quran tam ko sunaya Maa nana ne kalma se khaya Or Quran tam ko sunaya کیا میں نادا کا سایا نہیں کیا میں نادا کا سایا نہیں کیا میں نادا کا سایا نہیں کیا نبی کا نوسا نہیں مجھ پہ کیوں بند کرتے ہو پانی کیا محمد کا پیارا نہیں مجھ پہ کیوں بند کرتے ہو پانی کیا محمد کا پیارا نہیں وہ مدینہ جہاں میں جگر ہے اور مسجد میں اس گر کا در ہے وہ مدینہ جہاں میں جگر ہے اور مسجد میں اس گر کا در ہے کیا میں اس گر میں کہلا نہیں ہوں کیا میں اس گر میں کہلا نہیں کیا میں اس گھر میں کہلا نہیں کیا نبی کا نواسہ نہیں مجھ پہ کیوں بند کرتے ہو پانی کیا محمد کا پیارا نہیں مجھ پہ کیوں بند کرتے ہو پانی کیا محمد کا پیارا نہیں سلوات
जब शाह कर बला ने अपनी आखरी सासो में दी सदा मौला मत कहना मौला मौल बनीन से मत कहना शर्म मामल बनीन से मत कहना माने जो सिखाए बच सब आदाब मुझे नजदीक खड़े रहना जाबीर जहा बैठे जाके इस मौला मौल बनीन से मत कहना हर लाश पे गिर के कह
Do 
चले والسلام على رسوله الكريم وهو 
حبيب ربه والشفيع ذنوبنا هو أبو القاسم المصطفى محمد الصلاة والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المهديين الميامين ولعنة الله دائما على عدائهم إجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقال الله في كتابه المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أيحسب الناس أن يترك صدى I begin in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. Many of these faces are familiar to me, mashallah, from the school. Uh, I want to begin with one point before I continue, just so we can move forward, inshallah. That there's many traditions of the Ahlul Bayt that have told us about the importance of salawat. Many, many traditions. For example, one of them says that Every dua, you know dua, right? Every dua is blocked from going to the heaven illa bi salat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad except by reciting salawat on the Prophet and his family that every dua is incomplete without salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad so now I will ask you sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad And in fact, we have a tradition from Imam al-Radha, salamu alayhi, whose wafat is coming this week, inshallah, where the Imam has said that on Thursday nights, the angels descend, right? And that is a night where we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, where we recite dua, where we prepare for the day of Jummah, right? Later to Jummah, Shabi Jummah. And Imam al-Radha has said in a very beautiful hadith that on this night, there's a special angels that come on Thursday night with special pens only to record the names of those who recite salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So these angels with special pens their function and their job is to record the names who recite salawat, imagine. So this should never, we should never stop doing this and st we should never stop reciting salawat. I began with a verse from the Quran, I don't want to go of course into too much depth, but we should begin everything with Quran, it's very important to put everything in perspective with the Quran. This is my very important piece of advice for you, young, my young, uh, brothers and sons to put everything that you do in perspective with the Quran because the Quran has to be the beginning of everything that we do and Allah has told us in the Quran O oh mankind O oh humankind do you think that you've been left in this earth without anything without any purpose without any guidance without anything else to do meaning Allah often asks us questions in the Quran right he asks us questions of which he knows the answer to, but he wants us to think to ourselves how we would answer that question. So Allah says, do human beings think that they've been left in this world without a purpose, without a vision, without an identity, without guidance? Because without an identity, meaning without something guiding you, without a greater purpose in your life, people feel lost. That we know it's not enough to simply say that my name is, let's say, Zaid, or my name is Hussein, or my name is, is uh, you know, Muhammad, or whatever it is that you name. That those names are not enough. Family belonging is not enough. That we need some kind of identity, some kind of vision, some kind of direction to guide our life. This is what Allah is saying, that he, there's no way He could have just created us and left us without anything, just left us alone in this world. No, it's impossible, that's not the case. And that's why you have to first thank Allah and then thank your parents for the fact that we live at a time where most people your age 
don't have a purpose. They don't have any much to live for, really, aside from video games and maybe watching TV. But the fact that you're here as a part of this beautiful group for the remembrance of Imam al-Hussein is a sign that you are answering this verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which Allah says, do you think that you've been left without a purpose? Do you think that you've been left in this world without anything else? Without anyone to guide you? Without any sense of identity? Your belonging here, your coming here, you being sitting here is first of all saying labbaik ya Allah, Allahumma labbaik. That you are answering Allah by saying, yes, Allah, I have been given an identity. Yes, Allah, I have been given a purpose. Yes, Allah, I have been given something that is greater than the simple pleasures of life. And that is the dhikr of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Salamu alayhi alayhim ajma'een. Salu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. That we know that what it means to be a good person to be a good human being, to be a successful person, to be a learned person. All of these things are attributes or things that we want to have, yes or no? I don't think anybody doesn't want to be learned, right? You want to learn, you want to be a good person, you want to be a righteous person. And we know that for us, the only way that we can achieve that is through the remembrance of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. That is the only way that we can truly achieve that. And the sign of Allah is what? That we're responding to Allah's call in the Quran. Is that after 1400 years, we are still here together. Remembering Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Despite the fact that there are so many people in the world that don't want you to do this, that don't want you to get together, that don't want you to be united, that, that want to remove you from this world, that want to remove you, that don't want you to be here, yet you are here to remember the Prophet and his family. This is first and foremost the response to Allah's challenge in the Quran. So this remembrance of Imam al Hussein, this remembrance of Ahlul Bayt is actually the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if anyone ever asks you, oh, this is for Hussein, no, it is for Allah first and foremost. Because when you get together here, when you get together to remember Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, you are building an identity. You are building your personal character, you are building who you are as a person. And you are saying that I want to become a person that remembers Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. I want to become a young man who remembers Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. That I want this to be a part of my identity. I want this to be a part of who I am. When most, maybe for those who go, you know, who, who are aware of other things, most people your age, don't have anything like this. Nothing. They don't have anything like this. So you should thank Allah first and foremost for this. Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala And then Imam al Hussein alayhi salam reminds us in his dua of the responsibilities at your age. That many of you are baligh or going on your way to become baligh, inshallah. So what has the Imam advised young youth of your age? The Imam has given certain pieces of advice. It is in a, in a dua known as dua arafa. In dua arafa, Imam has given advice to the young people by saying that first we have to remember that it is Allah who has allowed me to come here. And come here. For rabbaytani za'idan fi kulli am. That everything that I have is from Allah. The fact that I've been able to come here is from Allah. The fact that, that, that I've been able to eat enough and drink enough and sleep enough so that I may grow every year is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why has Allah done this? Why has Allah allowed you, mashallah, these young shabab and youth 
to develop in such a way that they could remember Imam Hussein alayhi salam, that they could perform these rituals. Why? Because he's done this so to complete our minds. That our minds be pure. That why has God allowed us to grow every year, to become bigger every year, to grow every year, to, 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 to develop every year? This is coming back to my, per to my first verse, which is why? The question is, or rather the answer to that question is so that we may learn to find him. We may learn to accept that everything comes from Allah, that nothing is of our doing. Everything comes from Allah. There's no power but God's. Don't we recite this in our namaz? Bihawlillah wa quwwatihi wa aqumu wa aqrud. So who can tell me what does it mean? How many times a day do you recite it when you get up? Who can tell me what does this mean? You recite it how many times a day? What does it mean? To sit down and get up, right? Uh, to stand and to get up. Right? That it is Allah, that it's by the power of Allah that, uh, that I stand and that I sit. Imagine you recite this every day in your prayers. The Imam is reminding us, Imam al Hussein, the one who you have come to remember, the one that you have come to mourn for, the one that you have come to do matam and, and marzia and all of this, all of this for, reminds us that it is Allah, the, uh, Allah is the one who allows us to stand and to sit. Don't ever forget this because we live in a world where most people your age don't even know these things. Most people your age don't care for these things. Most people your age don't have any anjuman like this. Don't have any gatherings like this. This is the greatest na'ma al-kubra and blessing from Allah. Thus, thank Allah and thank your parents for bringing you here. Right? Allah tells us to thank Him and to thank our parents. So the first thing you should do is to thank Allah and then thank your parents for bringing you here and for bringing you on Salat al-Mustaqeem with the grace of Allah and the help and the wasila of the Imam of the time. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Then what does Imam al Hussein say for the youngsters, for the Shabab? He says that now that I have a mind and I have the ability to know right from wrong, I have the ability to write, I have the ability to read. Most of you can do that. So what does all that mean? Why? The Imam says that Allah has done this for me so that when I look out into the universe, when I look up at the sky, when I look at the leaves falling on the tree and then coming back the next season, that I see Allah in everything. I see you, Allah, in everything that I do. That who can do that but you? Who can allow all these leaves, right? When you're driving around, you're seeing all the leaves on the ground, right? Because it's fall, right? But are those leaves going to come back? Because he is the one who brings the earth to life after it has died. He is the one who brings the trees back to life after they have died. Allah Azza wa Jal. And Imam al Hussein is reminding us that when we come to remember him, when we come to remember his sacrifice, when we come to remember the Ahlul Bayt, we are remembering Allah. Because they have taught us how to remember. Allah Himself. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So, point one. The remembrance of Imam al Hussein is the remembrance of Allah. Because it is the Imam who has taught us how to remember who? Allah. Understood? So, this is a dhikr of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, these gatherings from Matam and Noha and Marthiya and Majlis 
is, a, is another answer to a command of Allah in the Quran. So everything you're doing this is, is an answer to the Quran itself. I'll give you another reason. So the first reason is we're answering Allah's challenge when he says, do humans think that they've been created without any purpose? So your purpose is to get together and remember the Prophet and to serve Allah, yes. But number two, the second one, and I'll end on this and then we'll, we'll, we'll narrate two stories from the life, of, one from the life of Imam Sadiq and one from the life of Imam Hussein. The second is Allah says, اَعْتَسِيمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا That all you who believe, hold fast, hold on to one rope and don't separate from one another. That when we get together here, we're telling Allah that we're united. That we're together as one community. That we're a brotherhood. Because Allah tells us, hold on to the rope of Allah. What is the rope of Allah? The rope of Allah is the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt. That hold on to this and do not separate from one, other, one another. La tafarraku. Do not separate from one another. So this is a sign of your unity, of your love for one another because the believers are brothers to one another. So there's two things, the remembrance of Allah and then the community. This is a sign of the community coming together, which is another answer or another way of saying, Allahumma labbaik. That, oh Allah, I'm answering your call. That the call to remember Imam al Hussein, the call for the marthiya of Imam al Hussein, for the noha for Imam al Hussein, for all of this is answering the call of Allah Himself in the Quran. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So I'll narrate a story to you now from the life of Imam al Sadiq. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. That one day Imam, Imam al-Sadiq was at his home and he had a companion over and the Imam had a majlis. Does anyone want to know how Imam's majlis was? Imam Jafar al-Sadiq had a majlis like this. So I'll tell you what the majlis looked like. The men were seated in the house and the ladies were seated outside in the courtyard and then the imam gathered all his companions together he gathered all his companions together and then he chose one companion abu umara his name is and he told abu umara and shidni fil hussein recite for me a poem about imam hussein so abu umara says and shittuhu i recited a poem then he says, recite another one for me. I recited another one. Then Imam is quiet. He says, recite another one. And he recited another one. And then he says, I began to hear screaming and crying <laughs> from outside the house and my Imam began to cry. And then he said, Abu Umara, recite another one. And Abu Umara recited another one, and his Imam began to cry over and over. Then he said, Ya Abu Umara, don't stop reciting the poems for Imam Hussain because he says that the one who recites a poem for Imam Hussain, look at the thawab here, brothers. The one who recites a poem for Imam Hussain and makes 30 people, makes 50 people cry, they're given the reward of Jannah of paradise. Then the one who recites and makes 40 people cry is given the reward of Jannah. The one who recites and makes 30 people or causes 30 people to cry is given Jannah. Then the Imam says the one who recites a single poem for Imam and Hussein and causes a single person to cry for Lahu al Jannah. For this person is given Jannah. So the thawab for reciting the poem is the Jannat of Allah, the Firdaus of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What more can we ask for than that? So this is a gathering of, we could say, Rawda min Riyad al-Jannah. This is a gathering of, inshallah, of a garden from among the gardens of the Jannat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. <laughs> And we know even Imam al-Rida alayhi salam, you know how he used to do the majlis? I'll tell you. So you, this is not a culture that has come up. This is from the time of the Imams themselves. Imam al-Rida 
used to gather all of his companions together and they would sit in a circle and each would take turn to recite some Marcia or Marthiya, we say in Arabic, Marcia, of course, you know, in Urdu, Gujarati, Marcia, but it's Marthiya or Marathi in Arabic. And the companions would each recite one, and sometimes the Imam would even turn to them, and he would tell them, you know, switch this line for this, this line is better, this line is better, this line is better. And the Imam would reward the reciters. Huge rewards. Obviously, nobody they wouldn't come for that intention. To such an extent that one of his companions recited a poem. I'll read this poem to you. This is from the Majlis of Imam Rada, which is, A Fatima lo khiltil Hussein mujaddilan. That, O oh, Fatima, had you seen your son Hussein laying alone? Wa matat achanan bishati furati. That your son Hussein has died thirsty at the edge of the furat. Wa idha latamat al Fatima. And when Fatima hits her fa hits her cheeks, doing matam on her cheeks, Bibi Fatima, over the body of her son Hussein Wajrati Dama al Ainfil Wajanati. This is from the Majlis of Imam al Rada alayhi salam. And her tears begin to fall down her cheeks onto her son's body. This is a poem and the 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 the, the Marcia of Di'bal al khuzai the companion of Imam al alayhi <coughs> So if anyone ever asks you, oh, why are you doing this? Say, this is the sunnah of my imams. This is the tradition of my imams. This is the practice of my imams because my imams did this. My imams placed emphasis on this. My imams taught to me how to remember Hussein alayhi So this is not something that you are doing on your own, but this is the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim, and you are continuing that today. And that's why Imam al-Mahdi tells us, Imam al-Hujja tells us what? Something very beautiful. Do you all consider yourself the followers of Imam, uh, Imam al-Mahdi? Yes. You do, right? Do you want to know two lines from Dua Nudba? Who's ever heard of Dua Nudba here? Dua Nudba is very beautiful. Inshallah, your parents can expose you to this dua. I will make this incumbent upon them, inshallah. Dua Nudba is a dua of Imam al Zaman. Recited to be recited on Fridays, inshallah. We can recite it any day, but especially on Friday. In this dua, the Imam says, Where are those to cry for my grandfather Hussein? Aina, ya, aina, yani. That the mourners shall mourn, and the screamers shall scream, and the weepers shall weep. So Imam is looking for you. Imam is looking for whom? For you. Where are the weepers? Where are the wailers? Where are the screamers who will scream La Bekya Hussein? Wa Husayna, Wa Khariba, Wa Imama. Then the Imam says, Azizun Alayan Abkik. Hard it is upon me to cry over you, meaning Imam Hussain alayhi salam. That or we're rather referring to the Imam. Or it's also a reference to Imam al Hussein. Azizun alayan abkik wa yafdulukal wara. That hard it is for me to cry over you when everyone has abandoned you. When my Mullah Hussein was left alone in Karbala, yet I stand here crying today. That after 1400 years, I stand here to remember Hussein. After 1400 years, I, he's saying, I, Al Hujjat ibn Hassan, beat my chest over you. Azizun alay, heart it is on my heart that I cry for you, wa yagdhulukal wara, and everyone else has run away from you. Everyone else has run away. Why? Because the traditions tell us, as the Prophet tells us in, in the hadith, that one day the Prophet came to visit Imam Ali and Sayyidah Zahra and Umm Kulthum and Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. He came over and they had dinner. You know what the sufra is? Right? When you eat on the ground. So Umm Kulthum, Umm Kulthum, and Bibi Zainab, they helped their mother to put the sufro. They put the sufro and they sat down on the sufro to eat with the prophets. To eat milk, honey, things like this. All of a sudden the prophet got up. 
They're like, what's going on? And he went in a corner and he began to cry. He recited two rakat namaz and he began to cry. Imam Ali is looking at him and thinking, well, what is going on here? And the Prophet is weeping and weeping and weeping. Imam al Hussein now comes out and he jumps into the lap of Rasulullah. Imam Hussein sits in the lap of whom? Rasulullah. And he says, Oh my father. He used to address him as his father. He says that when you come, when you come to our home, we were hoping to be happy, well, I, but now you have made us sad. You have made us sad when you have come to our home. And he says that Jibreel has come to me now. Jibreel has come to me now and he told me two things. One that you will be killed, وَمَصَارِعُكُمْ shatta, And your body will be discarded. Your body will be treated like waste. So thus I began to cry, the Prophet says, right? Bakka Arnabi Buka and Shadida. And the Prophet began to weep, he began to cry. And today we cry with the tears of the Prophet. Today we remember Imam al Hussein because the Prophet remembered Imam al Hussein. And I want to end with a story about a young man. A young man that perhaps you can find some inspiration from. His name was Wahab ibn Habab al Who's ever heard of Wahab ibn Habab al Kalbi? He was a young convert, imagine. But he didn't convert to Islam right away. He met Imam al Hussein on the way to Karbala. Wahab ibn Habab al Kalbi met Imam al Hussein, his caravan. He was with his mother and his wife. He just got married. He was about 17 years old, the traditions tell us. And he met Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And when he met and he heard of his Imam's message, he became a Muslim. He became a Muslim. And then he joined the army of Imam Hussein and the traditions tell us that he was one of the first ones to fight for his Mola on the day of Ashura. And then he said something so beautiful that as they were going out to fight, he sought the permission of Imam Hussein to go to fight. And his wife stood up and says, how can you go? And he says that, how can I remain alive when my Mullah Hussein is under threat? How can I remain alive when I know that my Mullah Hussein is going to be attacked? Look at this courage. Look at the courage of this young man. He goes out to fight, the traditions tell us. He went out to fight. He rushes out into battle and Yassar, the slave of Ziyad, struck Wahab, but Wahab comes back to his mother. Allahu Akbar. Wahab comes back to his mother. He comes back to his mother and he says, Oh mother, are you happy with me yet? Oh mother, are you happy with me yet? Are you happy with what I have done? She says, I will not be happy until you die for Hussein. I will not be happy with you, oh my son until you are killed السلام, until you are martyred and attain shahadat in front of Imam Hussain so then he goes back out to fight but on the other end he has his wife who loves him so much and his wife comes out into the battlefield Imam Hussain tells her to please go back she says that please do not take him away from me obviously she was very upset and he continued to fight with great courage until the traditions tell us that he was killed. But one thing happened, brothers. As he was fighting, his wife came out and grabbed his clothes. And she was, she was literally holding on to his clothes in the battlefield. And when the, some traditions say, and when the enemy saw this, they took a weapon and they did something very horrible to his wife in the middle of the battlefield. Imagine they didn't even treat ladies with respect. And that's why we see that after the death of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, after Abbas was gone, Qasim was gone, Habib was gone, Muslim was gone, Imam was gone, 
that our ladies and our sisters were treated very badly. If they could do this to the wife of Wahhab ibn Habab al-Kalbi, then imagine what they would want to do now the billah to the women of, of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. So we're told in the traditions that they lit their tents on fire and they forced them out of their tents. And they even took the earrings of Bibi Sakina, the earrings of Umm Kulthum, the earrings of Bibi Zainab, and they began to pull on their hijabs. They began to remove them from their heads. And they were forcing the women to walk without any shoes in the deserts of Karbala. Then from Karbala to Sham on camels, or rather from Karbala to Kufa, from Kufa to Sham. And these are the days that we remember their return to Medina. These are the days when we remember that they have now come back. I'll ask you one question and I'll end on this note. There was one lady that was left in Medina. Do you know what her name was? Umm al -Banin. Umm al -Banin, the mother of Abu Fadl Abbas, was left in Medina. And the traditions tell us that when Ahlul Bayt returned to Medina, the kafilat of Ahlul Bayt, Umm al banin came running from her home. She came out and they informed her that her four sons were killed. You know, she had four sons, not only Hazrat Abbas, she had four boys that were killed in Karbala. The tradition states that she ran out to Jannat al -Baki. She began to scream, Wa Husayna, Wa Aba Abdullah, Wa Gariba. And then she tells everybody, you know, the meaning of Umm al Banin is the mother who has many boys. Huh? She says that, Wake up, Umm al Banin. La Tadakirini, la, la, la Umm al Banin. Do not remember me as being Umm al Banin. Or Tadakirini be Umm al Banin. I was known as the one who was Umm al Banin. But today I have woken up and I have no more sons. So now I do not want the name Umm al-Banin anymore for the rest of my life. She says that I had four sons who were like lions. And I was the den which kept the four lions. But every one of my son, Amsa Sari'an Ta'ini, that every one of my son died with a spear. And we know that was, of course, the spear which entered the eye of Abu Fadl Abbas salam. And she is remembering this in Jannat al-Baqi. And they said that the ground of Baqi was shaking. When Umm al-Banin recited this poetry, it is a very long poem of about two pages. And she recited this marsiya. This is a mar marsiya of Umm al-Banin salam. In the, in the grave, Kabrasan, known as Baqi. May Allah SWT give us a tawfiq to remember her, to remember her sacrifice, to remember the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, and to live up to their expectations. That we cannot be the azadar of Imam Hussein without our salat. We cannot be the azadar of Imam Hussein without watching what our eyes look at. We cannot be the azadar of Imam Hussein without watching what our ears listen to. Because we have a great responsibility for being the azadar and zakirin of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So we pray to Allah to bless us to be among the real azadar of Imam Hussein. To bless us to be among the real zakirin of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And that inshallah Bibi Fatima alayhi salam will accept our mourning that she will accept our tears and we pray to Allah thanking our parents for bringing us to this majlis. Thanking our parents for arranging this and praying to Allah to give them more tawfiq and more blessings to continue to guide you and bring you with Imam's help to Surat al-Mustaqeem. Wa akhiru da'wana walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Matam Hussain.
शहादते है शायफ ये शायफ जाइए है हम रहे
Majors Mitter.
देखो नाना चली हूँ मैं शाम शाम आए शाम शाम आए शाम मैं देती का फन तुझको भैया अगर सर पेरे दा मेरे होती मैं देती का फन तुझको भैया अगर सर पेरे दा मेरे होती घर होते खुले हाथ मेरे तेरे जख्मों को हाथों से धोती घर होते खुले हाथ मेरे तेरे जख्मों को हाथों से धोती पा बंदे संसर बरहना पा बंदे संसर बरहना देखो भैया चली हूँ मैं शाम और कुसू में सहमी करी थी कभी देखू मैं जख्मी सकीना जिसके दामन में आग लगी थी कभी देखू मैं जख्मी सकीना जिसके दामन में आग लगी थी कभी रोहू मैं अपनी रेदा को कभी रोहू मैं अपनी रेदा को कभी देखू मैं जलते काया Oh, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a doctor. Rupesh, I'm 
the same. Same, 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 the same. قال الله التي هلت بفنائك عليكم إني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي ليل والنهار ولا جاء الله آخر الأحد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميع ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا خديجة القبراء السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء سيدة النساء العالمين السلام عليك يا حسن المجتبى السلام عليك يا حسين الشهيد السلام عليك يا علي الزين الآبدين ومحمد الباكر وجافر الصادق وموسى القادم وعلي الرضا ومحمد تكي وعلي النكي والحسن الأسكري ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا صاحب العهس والزمان الأمان 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 من فتنة الزمان السلام عليك يا شريك القرآن وقعبة الإيمان وإمامنا وإمام الإنس والجان أجل الله تعالى فرجا وسهل الله تعالى مخرجا وظهورت ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم أجل الله Let's recite Dua Imam Zimana بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم أكبر لوليك Thank you.